service for August 8th, or 8-8, if you like to add up the numbers of 8. Very excited to have you here for those of you that are actually here, and excited for those that are going to be watching live or going to be watching later on our website and on YouTube. So lots of ways to join in with our services. A couple of quick announcements on the tables and should be around, our little cute little things like this. And within those, there are places to list that you were here. I have to put that down, that way I know I'm here. And we also have the little envelopes for the offering and prayer requests. So if you'd like to fill those out, obviously the offering envelopes can go in back. The prayer requests during the second song, if you have something, give my attention, I'll be looking around and I can pick those up and we can talk about them during the prayer time. If you'd like it to be more private, simply drop them in the offering box. So we've got lots of things to talk about, lots of good things going on, lots of joys to be excited about, which is why I always like to say, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And what better way to rejoice is with some great music from the Ignite Music Team. Take it away.
bless each one of these people. Lord, many things are on our hearts, many joys, many concerns. So in these moments, help us to come together as a community of faith and praise you and help to bring peace to everyone that is here today. Lord, we all know that we need you in each and every day, in each and every week, in each and every hour of our lives. So Lord, please remind us to be thankful of all the blessings you give us. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. We've got a lot of things to talk about. And again, I've got lots of stacks up here and I'm going to be asking for help. One of the things I didn't mention in that stack is these blue laminated, blue laminated cards. 
where there's a QR code. If you've been to restaurants, whatever you've seen those, that is a great new way to use your phone, zap right into our website and see what's going on. There's also a quick way to give when you're out of town or want to donate or simply don't have any cash. We'll take checks, cards, money order, traveler's checks. Well, they don't do traveler's checks anymore. Well, anyway, this was a thought. I had to come up with that. Also, well, some other things. Cash, <laughs> cash. What can I say? You know. uh, we do want to. Uh, we want to be joyful. We've got some flowers on the piano. Those are brought to us from Todd and Beth Kurtenbach for their 35th wedding anniversary. So oh. congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for brightening our day and, and congratulations. Uh, in the back, you will find the passports. We've been talking about these and they have been in a packet that was mailed out. These are great ways for you to kind of keep track of all the things that you can, well not all, but a great number of things you can do just this quarter. And what we're doing is kind of having a friendly little challenge, so pick one up and as you do things you can mark them off. As I mentioned last week, when it says Sunday morning, it's you, so you bring a friend, you get to talk, take two of them off. So you can knock off two at one time. There's attend a Bible study, attend a small group. There's one for families, and there's one for individuals. So please, if you didn't get one, please make sure that you pick one up so that you can keep track. And again, we'll see what we come up with. We're also working on some prizes since we'll have a little bit of a fun competition. We're also working on the neighboring challenge, and so I'm going to toss this to Pastor Stewart if she'd like to come up or if she'd like to just tell us about this. There are some of these in back, too. Yes, this is a neighborhood block map, and this is to consider the eight houses closest to your front door. And if you'd like more information about this, talk to Ann Callison or Brooke Seams, or you can talk to myself. But we're just promoting this among our church to get to know our neighbors. And um, so this is an all-church process and, and journey, and so we just want to challenge people to move from stranger to acquaintance, from acquaintance to um, relationship, and so check it out. Excellent, and we all know God's commandment was love your neighbor as yourself, and you can't hardly love them if you don't know who they are. So it's a good idea, to, and again, as Pastor Schuer mentioned, this is not going out and saying, hey, come to church with me, or let me tell you about Jesus. It's not one of those moments. It's like, do you even know who your neighbor is? And that's the greatest way to bring peace on earth, I believe. So it's a great program. So again, hopefully you'll get a chance to, to do that. Some other announcements I want to cover. We do offer script. So if you're looking for great presents for people or you don't know what to buy, obviously we have everything from Amazon to Walmart. We just added Big Apple Bagel on that. And with many of those, we get a, a percentage back, which goes right directly to uses for the church as we bring disciples to Christ. So obviously that's another great blessing that we have that works for us. So, any other announcements that I might have missed at this point in time? Joe! They're going back to school! <laughs> They're going back to school! That's a joy! That was, yeah, that's it, okay. So, I have one for joy and one for concern, okay, so that, right? Okay, then, but they're going back. And again, that's, that's a, that is obviously a joy and a concern, so we do want to keep them because lots of things are going on in our world even with COVID. So those that are going back to school, we want to make sure that we keep them in our thoughts too. And for the families that are turning them loose, if you're a first time family turning them away, there's a challenge there too. Great, any other announcements? Announcement? Uh, this Wednesday is the youth kickoff picnic. And we will be out at Pawnee Park, East Shelter, food and games. Youth kickoff this Wednesday, Pawnee Park, East Shelter, 6.30 to 8.30, and the key word was food and games. So a great activity, a great way to get started as we move into fall. Thank you. Yes? Uh, the parade is this Sunday, and um, we have a barrel trade again from Camp Continental, and we're really going to try to get more than welcome. So, and walkers as well. Yes, the uh, salad luncheon, you can still sign up for that if you'd like to. Uh, and again, as you mentioned, so that's Thursday. Again, the parade, so we will have our normal 8 o'clock service. We'll have the 915, which will be over in Frankfurt Square. 
Uh, then obviously we'll have the 10.30 and then we'll be back over here. Sunday night, that's after the parade. That's assuming we've all survived that little two mile walk. <laughs> yes? Next Sunday, the backpack program, the place at the table, will be hosting a tractor pull. I don't know if they have one our size, but you know, I challenge you if they do, but let's assume they don't. I hope they do. <laughs> they will, but all is welcome and it is indeed free. So another good cause. That's at one o'clock. There's going to be tons of things to do as we move through this week, and thank God that we're able to participate in those kinds of things. Other announcements? Yes. Okay, I am interviewing you about your faith journey and where you started in your faith and where you are now. Um, if you would be willing to have me interview you, please contact me. Yes, so Rebecca's doing interviews for her graduate or for her school work, so I'm sure she'd love to hear your story. I know every story here is different, and certainly there are always blessings to hear. So make sure you stop and visit with Rebecca if you'd like to, to do an interview. Let's go moving on with joys. We mentioned the joy with the anniversary. What other joys that we have? Yes, Lisa. A couple of years ago, we prayed for my cousin Jordan and his wife Mariah when they got married. Jordan followed a very rough road for a very long time with drugs and alcohol and mental health issues and physical health issues. And they had a baby boy on Friday named Silas Wayne. So now I have a great nephew named Silas and a second cousin named Silas. Don't know what the answer to that, but <laughs> we are very, very happy. Congratulations, that's wonderful. Wonderful. Other joys, yes. Daniel turned the big one four. Oh yes, Daniel's fourteen. Daniel's doing the video for us today, so happy birthday, Daniel. Did you get your birthday presents yet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was closed, right? No, no oh. clothes. Okay, no clothes. All right. Other joys? Yes? I uh, go back to Wayne on Wednesday on Sunday next week, so this is my last Sunday here. Oh, well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. We're very glad to be here. Good luck going back to Wayne. And you're majoring in? Elementary, yeah, there's a teacher at heart. All right, got a history. We'll talk about teaching someday. Great, wonderful, congratulations. Other joys? The joy I have, obviously, we want to point out that the Stewart's were on vacation and they are back, thankfully. So Glenn is back and Pastor Stewart's back, so we're glad to have them. Hopefully you enjoyed your time. Always nice to have them back. And hopefully anybody that went on vacation had a safe and uneventful and great vacation. We had a grandson turn two yesterday. Terrific twos. Yep, well, terrible twos. One of the other. Yes, our little grandson Bennett turned two yesterday and it was at exactly 4.57. They had the minutes counted down. We loved every second of it. It was a lot of fun. Joys or concerns? Let's go ahead and move that way. I think I'm going to toss one out as far as a little bit of both. You know, we're wrapping up the Olympics and it, it's been really wonderful to watch how all of these people, thousands of Athletes are coming together, and without the crowds there, they're supporting each other. And I thought, what a great Christian message that is, even though they're not all necessarily maybe from Christian countries, but they're still showing that support for each other. And what a great event the Olympics was. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it's going to be winding up tonight, but again, a great cause. And so we, we hope all, all athletes make it back home safe. Yes? Yes, favorable weather, maybe a little cooler weather, it's a little bit of rain, something. Yes, favorable weather as we move into that critical time, absolutely. Yes? Prayers for those experiencing the wildfires and the people and firefighters and all those affected in a very severe drought. 
prayers for the, the fires and uh, the, the firefighters, the victims of the fires, so those people that are out doing everything they can. Yes, absolutely. And for anyone who's struggling with any kind of a loss, whether it's the loss of a home or the loss of a loved one, whatever it might be, we want to obviously keep them. anyone ill in the homes or in the hospital. We want to keep them in our prayers. Yes? I'd also like to pray for our Nebraska uh, National Guard men who have gone to Afghanistan. And we know two of them have left new babies here in Nebraska. And uh, new kids and uh, family and just that God will just really take care of these guys. Pray for our National Guard members and the families they're leaving behind. Absolutely. Okay, let's have a little prayer, please. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for bringing us all together today. Lord God, I personally pray that this will be a blessing on all of those that are here, that you'll bless all of those, and that what happens here it continues to be a blessing as we move out into the street, as we take our journeys with you. Lord God, I personally thank you and praise you for all the people here, the music team, the video text, all the people that are here. It's such a wonderful blessing for me. Lord God, we express our joys for birthdays, for anniversaries. We are our joys for those going back to school, for the families of those sending them back to school. Lord God, we thank you for births. Lord God, we pray for all of those that need your strength right now those that are battling fires, those victims of fires, those that are in the hospitals or nursing homes. Lord God, we ask a special blessing on the athletes of the Olympics that they make it home safe and that maybe what they've learned in the fellowship they've had with each other they can also take back. And may we also learn from them. Lord God, we ask you to continue to bless us, I ask you for great weather for farmers as we move into that critical time period. We ask you for good weather as we enjoy time together outside as the Columbus Days comes up. But Lord, we know whatever you give us, you give it to us because it's the right thing for us to have and that you'll always be there for us. Lord God, we know that all you have for us is love and the best in mind for us. Lord God, I ask you to hear now those prayers that come from the heart and the minds of those who maybe didn't want to express them out loud but still need to hear, voice them to you. Please, Lord, hear these prayers. Lord God, we ask a special blessing on all of our prayers that you continue to be with us. And as we join together in saying the prayer that your Son taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Scripture today is from Ephesians 4, verses 25 through 32. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of reception, redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, and may he bless the tongue of his messenger. We've been talking a little bit, we've come through some different paths. We're dealing with the theme of priorities and perceptions. And I got to thinking a little bit about that because many times the things we do and the things we don't do are based upon how we perceive things. And as we try to be more Christ-like and be, to live a life worthy of living, then we need to be talking about some of those things that might sidetrack us, that might keep us from 
living and loving the way he would want us to. In other words, keep us from imitating God. Last week we talked a little bit about givers and gifts to not focus on one, but to focus on the giver. And today I thought, well, let's talk about do's and don'ts. Seems like a logical thing to talk about. Do's and don'ts. We hear it all the time. Now, in our scripture we had four, basically, do's or don'ts. And so we're probably thinking, well, do we really need to go over all these? We've talked about do's and don'ts before. We know what's right. We know what's good. We know what's bad. We know we're not supposed to sin. We know all of those kinds of things. So I have no intention of going over all Ten Commandments or all 600 plus laws of thou shalt or thou shalt not. There's no point in that. And I'm probably sure you're thinking, well, do we really even need to go over this at all? We already know all of this stuff. Do we need to go over this? Well, maybe we do, and maybe we don't. But sometimes a refresher is always a good idea. We heard a lot when we were growing up, do's and don'ts. Do this, don't do that, leave this alone, don't touch that, orders, commands. We got bossed around by just about everybody when we were little. And sometimes when we get bigger. From relatives, teachers, brothers, sisters, so on. And when it's not being told what to do, we're seeing signs everywhere. Don't walk on the grass. Don't do this. Don't do this. No left turn. Whatever it might be. Don't do it. It reminded me of the song from the 70s done by a Canadian band called the Five Man Electrical Band. And the entire chorus was sign, signs, everywhere sign. Blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this. Don't do that. Can't you read the signs? Everybody telling us what to do. Even in my small town of Genoa, I knew exactly that everybody knew what I was doing, and they all had the right, given to them by my mom, to discipline me any way they decided they wanted to. And I was generally going to catch it at home again, and that's actually the way it does work in small towns. Now, of course, it's easy to sit there and go, well, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it my way. My way's better. You don't understand. I'll do it if I want to. I'll do it my way. I'll do it exactly the way I understand it. But again, we have a perception problem. We have a priorities problem. We're thinking we're being punished if the other person is controlling us. But again, punishments and priorities, perceptions are not always the same. When you're three, it's hard to understand why a 20-year-old is telling you what to do. Sometimes when you're 20, it's hard to understand why a 40-year-old is telling you what to do. Rules and regulations, we always have to follow them. But one of the things that I discovered under rules and regulations was very simple. Give me all the rules and regulations you want, but if you toss in a why, I'm a lot more likely to do it. Now, I made it very clear when I first started here, I gave Pastor Stewart and the rest of the staff three W's. You gotta give me these three, or I'll probably mess up. Tell me where you want me to be, when you want me to be there, and what you want me to do. Pretty simple rules, and those I was more than willing to accept. And being new, I should accept those. And there may be a point where I'll say, well, why? Now, if there's going to be two answers, I'll get a why or I'll get a because, <laughs> which is simple enough, and I'll have both of them coming. It'll be all right. In the scripture, we had Jesus give us four items that we talked about, a real solid set of do's and don'ts. Now, they should be pretty obvious, but let's see if we can get the why out of some of them. The first one Jesus said is, don't lie. Well, that seems kind of like a duh. Don't lie. Jesus tells us to not lie, but to speak truthfully. Well, let's keep things in mind. We can speak about the truth because God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the truth. So it's one thing to talk about speaking of the truth. It's another thing to speak the truth. And sometimes we have more troubles with those. We need to work on doing both. Now we've all been taught it's wrong to lie. We already know that. And even if you go to court, I'll tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I hope they still leave us so help me God. <laughs> Don't know. Haven't been in court in a while. Appreciate that. But it brings up an interesting concept. Lies. Well, are all, lie, are all lies equal? Are all lies equal? 
Is it really wrong if we tell a white lie? Is it wrong if we tell a lie to kind of soften a situation? To save feelings? In a world of half-truths, lies, deceit, slander, and lies of omission, it's hard to start breaking down what's really appropriate and what's not. And when we tell lies, the hardest thing in the world is to remember what lie you told who. And the key is that all of them work to drive us farther from God. Because think of it this way, if God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are truth, and the Father's of truth and in charge of the truth, who's in charge of lies? Satan. Satan. John 8, verse 40, uh, John 8, verse 44 spells that out. Satan is the father of lies. We know that. And how damaging can a lie be? Now, maybe we can get away with telling lies to each other, but I'll tell you one person you can't get away from. You can't tell a lie to God. And if you think you can, come talk to me, because i got a bridge I need to sell you. It's just not going to work. Do not let lies or falsehoods get in the way of your relationship with God. And there's one other problem with that. I'll get to that at the end. He also says to not be angry. Do not be angry. Which includes all of its brothers and sisters and cousins, rage, rage bitterness, and so on. Because they carry us and they pull us down. And he also says not to let the sun set on our anger. Well, what's the point? Why not? I can be angry. Anybody here ever not been angry at something? Have something just set you off? Think of a time when something probably did that. You were so angry. What happened? You lost track of your priorities and your perception. Anger has a way of causing us to lose that. And it takes up space. He also says not to let anger go. Anger left to build, and as I call it, steep, stays in our minds. And when anger is in our minds, what's room for anything else? There is none. God tells us, do not be angry, and do not let it build. Anger is Satan's foothold into your heart. It's interesting, people I know that will carry anger around, sometimes like a badge of honor. Oh, they did me wrong. She said this, they did that. I have the right to be angry. I have the right to be angry. Do you? I know people who get so angry about things that literally when you talk to them, all they can focus on is that other person that did this thing to me. How's anger doing that? I used a comment once that rent, when you have anger in your heart and in your mind, it's living there rent free and taking up space and you're getting nothing in return. Being so focused with anger that we forget the joy. And I'm going to tell you something. This is something I discovered a long time ago. When you're walking around thinking, well, so-and-so is thinking this about me. So-and-so, I'll bet, I'll bet you so-and-so is doing this. I'll bet you so-and-so is thinking this. Oh, I know what they're doing. Seriously? You know what that person's really doing? They haven't thought about you in three months. But you've lost your joy. You cannot multitask with anger. It will take over all your space. So not only does lying take us away, anger takes away the room that we might have for God in our hearts and in our minds. Another don't. The third was not to steal. We made that very clear. Don't steal. Well, we know that one too. Why are we talking about these rules we know about? Don't lie. Don't be angry. Don't steal. Rex, Come on, you can do better. This one seems quite logical. This one is not as much about stealing, which of course we shouldn't do, because we're taking from those in need, and we're giving nothing in return. But this is really about Jesus, I think, saying, don't take the easy way out. When he says, don't steal, he's saying, you need to work for these things. You get stronger with these things. Yes, you could go steal that, Call it yours? Maybe nobody would know. Maybe. 
But Jesus is telling us that the work itself is our reward. The path when we become Christians is not flat and covered in rose petals. Because those challenges make us stronger, it's working for it. So not only just stealing is wrong, but it's taking away part of your joy and causing you to have other issues. And finally, Jesus says, watch your tongues. Well, Rex, that's the same as lying. No, it's not. Because words can come out that are hurtful, that don't have to, that may or may not be considered a lie. God says, do not let unwholesome words and thought words leave our mouths, because what comes out of here lives here and here. But why is it so easy to do that? Why is it so easy to get into a group and start to fall into that? It's easy to jump in with the crowd and sometimes get that rumor mill going. It's easy. Sometimes it's kind of fun. Until you really think about it. How easy it is to tear down, to roll and laugh, to sometimes let swear words or curse words go because we sort of get wrapped up and we forget. That loose talk is hurtful to your relationship with God. But there's something else that's critical about that. When you can use words that work against others, they will come back to haunt you. I remember watching a Western, an old black and white Western the other day. This gentleman was supposed to be a member of the Texas Rangers, and he was a lousy Texas Ranger. And they kicked him out. You know what? He was filled with anger. He said, I'm going to get even. And so he went to the criminal element, this gang. He said, I can bring you the rangers, and you'll be able to wipe them out. Set them up with an ambush. Obviously, the criminals were thrilled to have him. He went and lied. He told the rangers, hey, listen, come this way. I can show you how to get that criminal group. I want to get back in with the rangers. Now we got stories going. He leads them into what's obviously, if you're watching on TV, you're going, don't go in there. <laughs> they did. And what happens? They get wiped out. But the key here, not only did we have the lies and deceit going and the anger, but this man who had that anger, the leader said, okay, go down and check on him. We can't leave a survivor. And while he was walking down the hill, what did the leader do? He killed him. The rest of the criminals said, what'd you do that for? He's on our side. We heard him. He's on our side. And the key was, as the leader said, if he'll turn on his friends, he'll turn on us. Be careful of those people who will talk about others behind their backs. Because they will. Do the same. So again, of these four things we've talked about, we, go, we can see the damage it does to us, but let me go one step farther. Number one, our relationship with God and with Jesus is critical that we keep it open and honest and loving. Now, God's not going to throw us out if he catches us in a lie. He's not going to condemn us to hell and throw us in fire and brimstone. God's a loving God. He's going to give us a chance. But why do that? Why waste that energy? But don't let it drive that wedge. Don't even let it be there. And the next portion, which is so critical, is that while we're doing the things we just talked about, the lies, the anger, the unwholesome talk, the stealing, or that lack of work ethic, that lack of really following God, you know what else is happening? We're having people watch. They're making decisions about their choice and their trip with God because they're not sure about it. But maybe if I watch him or I watch her, maybe I'll see if that's the God I want to follow. We have to obviously have to be careful with all of those things as we set up not only our relationship with God, but the relationship others are going to build. 
That's one of the things that God says, do not cause your brother to stumble. And that's what he's talking about. Now again, I have no intention of going over the rest of the do's and don'ts. Number one, we don't have time. And number two, I like what I'm doing and I'm going to be here a long time, so I need stuff to talk about weeks coming down the road. So bear with me on this because we'll get to some of those. But again, when you think about our do's and don'ts today, I'm not going to tell you what to think. I'm not going to tell you how your week's going to go. I'm not going to tell you how to interact with each other. That's a decision you make with God. Because each one of us has a decision we'll make. I can tell you when I talk about things like this, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm talking about me. Have I ever lied? Yep. Have I ever been so angry I couldn't see straight? Yep. Anyone else? I want to ask a show of hands. But I, what I will say is if my shoe fits, wear it and we'll work through this together. So as we keep the track of these things to help us be the role model that God wants us to be, let's focus on the most basic items. To value truth over lies and anger, deceit and destruction, to work toward building that community of kindness and compassion, which is exactly what we talked about with our neighboring. To share the greatest truth ever, that Jesus is our path to salvation, the way, the truth, and the life. And that maybe we can live as the next chapter in Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 1 and 2 said, Be therefore imitators of God, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. May we all choose our do's and don'ts this week so that we can say, not that we were good enough or worthy of God, but that we did it to show our love and gratitude to God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you again for coming and participating in tonight's service. I greatly appreciate all of you coming, and I am very, very blessed with those of you that are here and those that are watching. I hope that I never, ever, ever, ever not tell you how much I appreciate you. And hopefully in your journey next week, you'll find some time to maybe invite a friend. And if you do, you can mark it down on your sheet. And now may the power of God and the salvation given to us through our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and strengthen you. And may he guide you through your do's and don'ts that they might be based on his priorities and his perceptions as you travel through your week. Go forth spreading his good news in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.